Hey, welcome back to the Psychedelic Cherry. I'm May as always and uh, stick around because today we're talking about how to read schematics and layout diagrams. Ah! So you don't need to know how to read a schematic diagram in order to build a clone pedal, for instance. Um, depending on where you're at in musical electronics, you absolutely can lean heavily on kits and layout diagrams, and you can get by. Um, but eventually, you're going to want to learn to design your own pedals and at that point, you're going to have to dive into the deep end. And when you dive into the deep end, there is nothing more intimidating for some reason than the schematics. schematics. The schematics are actually a really simple concept. They're just a drawing of symbols that represent actual components like resistors and capacitors. And then there are lines connecting those uh, uh, resistors and capacitors, etc., telling you how the circuit should flow. Now, um, I think this gets people a little scared because unlike the layout diagram, this is an abstraction. It's a conceptual map. So it's not a literal map showing you where in the circuit board you want to put each capacitor, resistor, whatever. Um, it is telling you these components need to be connected, these other components don't, and this is where a ground needs to be, etc. But it doesn't necessarily tell you put resistor 1 in the holes labeled resistor 1. And I think the other reason that it can be somewhat intimidating is it looks akin sort of to any sci-fi movie's depiction of alien pictographs. And I think that that is probably on purpose. Um, but nevertheless, it's actually, it may be an abstraction, but it's actually a really simple concept. So we're going to go over each symbol, what it means, and how to translate a schematic. So with that, let's go to the drawing board. All right, don't mind my doodle here, but let's start out with symbols. This is the symbol in North America, that is, which is where I am, for a resistor. Uh, it's just a nice little squiggly line here. North America, we pronounce banal wrong, we hate the metric system, and for some reason, this is our sign for a resistor. Now, <clears throat> If you're not in North America, you're pretty much anywhere else. This is the symbol for a resistor. It looks like a resistor. It's pretty clear what this is. Then, of course, a popular resistor is the potentiometer, which is a variable resistor, and all you do is add this arrow. So <clears throat> this is the symbol for a capacitor. It kind of looks like a large parallel capacitor, and that's sort of how you can tell what it is. This lovely little thing is a diode, a simple, ordinary diode. Doesn't do anything too fancy, unlike my font work, which is super fancy. But if you want a light emitting diode, you simply add these two arrows to represent the light emitting from the diode, otherwise known as an LED. There you go. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is the symbol for a switch. It looks like a switch. There you go, switch. This is the symbol for a battery. It sort of looks like a battery standing on end from an aerial view maybe. Um, and of course, any circuit would not be complete without a ground. That's the original ground connect symbol, but this is more popular, this one on the right here. Now, of course, there are many more symbols for schematics, uh, some of which are very infrequently used, but you can Google them. They're there. Now, once you know what components you're working with, you simply look at the schematics diagram to determine which of your conductive pathways need to connect. Now, your most common conductive pathways are gonna be stranded wire 
or just the copper that runs along your circuit board. And you can tell when two pathways connect by this simple little dot, which I'm looking at here. Uh, if there's a dot, then those two pathways connect. No dot, no connection. That's it. So that's it. That is a very simple concept, but that is how you read a schematic diagram. Now, when it comes to layout diagrams, it's pretty paint by numbers. Uh, it is actually a physical map of your circuit board, exactly how things should be laid out. In fact, you really don't have to know much about electronics at all other than what piece is named what. A resistor is a resistor, a capacitor is a capacitor. If you know that, you can stick the components in the right place and it should work. So uh, I hope you can take that information and do something fucking cool with it. And uh, if you do, please send me pictures, tag me on Instagram, whatever you need to do. I would love to see your shit because I have really cool followers who actually make stuff and do things and, you know, make the world go around. So um, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, hit the bell. That's how it goes. I'm Meg. Goodbye.